very exciting our first batch of button quail that you know we had laid and then incubated ourselves just hatched uh, we had nine in the incubator nine eggs and eight hatched so very happy with that hatch rate um, here they are just running around having a good old time and uh, yeah they're very cute these are just one day old and they're so tiny they're like the size of your finger and they weigh like almost nothing but uh, yeah, awesome pets. So we've had button quail. We first got them from eBay. We got 15 eggs, only two hatched. Apparently when you ship them, the hatch rate is a lot less. We bought a little $25 incubator and been using that. Um, and yeah, uh, so we had two survive and they started laying eggs. Um, they lay one a day after eight weeks. And here they are, um, had a just hatching. Uh, so that's the incubator and when we came home after a night of camping we found these guys all hatched and ready to ready to get into their brooder so yeah they say to keep them in the incubator after they hatch for about 24 hours to dry out and things like that and that, that'll keep them warm yeah so there's already some eggs in there so the plan is we have two incubators the second incubator here with 10 eggs in it and this is an automatic turner incubator so those have been in there for 10 days. So probably in about nine days, those will hatch. And so these guys just hatched after 19 days in that incubator down there. And um, so we're gonna try to see if we can introduce them to their parents and see what happens. So here we go. Ideally that we could just um, introduce the button quail chick and have the adults take care of them. But our experiment didn't work out so well. The, you know, the male was very scared of the chick just running away, running away. And then the female started pecking at the chick kind of aggressively. So we just got them out of there and went to plan B, just setting up a brooder and putting them all in there. There I put a heat pad on the underside of the cage. And then I put down a painter's tarp. This is how we usually do it. And then put down some paper towels to give them some traction with their little, little feet. Here is a 3D printed waterer I made just so that they wouldn't drown. A lot of the other waterers are kind of big, but I do have one that I do like for the little guys too. I'll link to it in the description. There's a chick grow, the chick starter feed that we use. We do crush it up a little more when they're tiny one day, two year old chicks. I also put some mealworms in there for extra protein and they, the adults love the mealworms. That's their favorite little treats. I just had a little cap and just put the feed in there and then that little um, that little tunnel there just to give them a little bit of privacy. Uh, here's some thermometers and uh, humidity detectors. And really the thermometer is what I wanted to make sure that they're getting that 90 degree, 90 to 95 degree heat uh, with the heat lamp. And I don't want the whole cage to be hot so they can retreat in certain areas. It's been quite a cool journey raising these button quail, you know, just seeing the kids, um, you know, go from chick to, you know, adult to, you know, after eight weeks, these button quail will start laying eggs if they're female. Um, but yeah, they mature in eight weeks, just two months, which is kind of crazy. And, you know, the things we've learned along the way that, you know, that the, they will they'll lay eggs, like these eight eggs were laid, you know, in eight different days, but the eighth egg, you know, hatches the same exact time as the first um, first egg that was laid. And it's a process, you know, they, they activate as soon as they feel like the temperature of their mother sitting on them consistently. That's when they get, the mother hen gets broody. You know, in this case, we're not allowing her to sit on them. We're putting them in an incubator, but the same thing, they get activated as soon as we put them in the incubator. And then 19 days later, they hatch. So we learn all these cool things and we see the, the whole life cycle process. You know, we raise these, these adults that laid these eggs uh, from a chick, we incubated them. Um, so from an egg, we raised them and just seeing the kids uh, do that whole process. And actually, we're trying to start a business with Valen. He's trying to caretake for these animals. We help him a lot because he's only seven, but he's trying to sell these uh, the fertilized eggs for $3 a piece and then these chicks for $10 a piece and hopefully have a little sustainable business because he should, you know, ideally, they still lay one a day. Uh, so from just uh, a male and a female adult um, button quail, um, you know, we should have 365 chicks by the end of the year. Uh, which is kind of crazy to think Chick about. Did not hatch. I believe it's just it had a crack in it, so I think it's it should be hollow. Let me see. I'm gonna crack it right now. Oh no! It just seems like the embryo never formed. Maybe it wasn't fertilized or something. You can see the yolk. The yolk in there. No, I don't think we'll eat this one because it hasn't been refrigerated and it's been cooking for the last. Few days. All right, so those just hatched, so we're gonna put, I made this cardboard insert. Um, I like it better, because these are made for chicken eggs. So this, this goes there, that's the temperature probe. So 
put this guy in, and I made these holes so the eggs sit in there a little better. Valen's gathering the eggs. So we have two incubators, and they lay an egg a day, So, and it takes 20 days to do a cycle. So the theory here is every 10 days we you know, have um, chickens hatching or quail hatching, and then we have we put 10 in here and then 10 in there. So in 10 days, those should hatch. We just have a hatching from here today. They have to pay attention to make sure they don't make sure they don't run away. So we need more, oh, there's one more egg over here. Okay, so you got them all. So bring them over here. We put them for the first 15 days. We want it um, the fat end up. And then we spin them five times a day. Because this is the manual one. The other one will spin them automatically. But this one we gotta do manually. We did use to mark them with pencil. But really all you gotta do is rotate it 180 degrees and you're okay. You kind of rotate it around its axis, but fatten up for the first 15 days. And then the last three days you stop turning. For the last four days you stop turning and you lay them flat. And then you stop turning. And then they should hatch. Okay, that's it. Let's put the cover on, plug it in, turn it around. I did get extra thermometers, which I want to pop in. And that just also, this also has humidity, because you want to keep the humidity right around 50% while they're incubating. And then you want to increase it to like 60% when they're uh, the last four days getting ready to hatch. Uh, I just increased humidity by adding water. So this was in there um, while they're getting ready to hatch. So this should bring it up to temperature and I gotta add some water in those water ducts. To refill the water, I like to use this turkey baster. Um, it works pretty well. So just suck up some water. Because otherwise you're spilling all over the place and it's a very thin channel. I also added this sponge. I don't know if it's actually doing anything, but I figure it can hold a little more water. The sponge, and I'll spill out. So I just refill the water. And that should be good to go. I refill that poly every uh, five days or so. Um, and, and I just check on the humidity and check the, the temperature. You know, you want that temperature to be right at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so Valen's gonna demonstrate spinning the eggs. Very simple process. You gotta lean them at a different angle that they look just work. So we had a good, really good success, uh, hatch rate you know, with these guys. Um, we only had nine eggs and eight of them hatched. So really good uh, rate. The reason you turn the eggs is so the air sac within the eggs, egg um, doesn't get trapped or stuck in one place and the embryos can continue to breathe. So that's why you want to turn them. And they say three to five times a day. We've been doing like five times just to be safe. Yeah, bunny quails seem to make really good pets, especially in small quantities. You know, now that we have more, it might be a little bit more of a headache. But with two, you know, we were just changing their cage once a week, and that would just be rolling up the uh, paper underlayment. And we were using, um, you know, aspen shavings uh, as their bedding once they got older. Uh, here's some footage of the chicks as they grew. You know, our last two, here's some footage. You know, this is probably like a week old. They start getting their feathers, their down coming in. And then here you can see they get a lot more feathers. This is probably like two weeks old. Um, and then this is footage, you know, one, one time it escaped from the cage because they'll start flying after a couple days. So you need to put that, put them in the cage. Oh, here's some footage when, uh, when we first tried uh, incubating the eggs, we had 10 of them on a plate. And then unfortunately they all, they all fell down onto the floor. Everyone was crying and it was pretty sad. But uh, we said, you know, when uh, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So we cooked an omelet with these eggs. Not really an omelet, but you can see these quarter sized eggs that we feasted on. Um, and they were tasty, tasted like eggs. Here's the kids trying them out. Um, <laughs> and they were, you can see Valen's eyes are poofy because he was crying because we wanted to have chicks and instead we had eggs. But yeah, they were good. Um, anyway, yeah, definitely something, a cool, definitely experiment. I'd recommend, you know, just getting a, picking up a $25 incubator on Amazon and, you know, getting some fertilized eggs and seeing, seeing the whole process from beginning to end. It's quite amazing. So if you're interested, just uh, send me a message and uh, we can arrange something and Valen can sell you some, so it's part of his business. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. Godspeed. Don't forget to subscribe, comment. Thanks.